Hi everyone, it's Avi Martinson here. In this video, I will introduce you to the develop module in Adobe Lightroom. Right now, I am in the library module, but I want to go over to develop. And there's two ways to get there. I can click here, or I can press the D button on the keyboard. Now I'm in the developing module, and on this side, we have the developing menu. We're going to start here on top. Uh, we have the settings here. We have ISO 800, a 70 millimeter lens at aperture f8, and I got one four hundred of a second. And this is the histogram, shows the distribution of different tones in the picture. Under here. We have some useful tools we can learn to apply in our developing methods. First is cropping tool. So you can take one of the sides here and drag it in if you want to crop. And if you want to move, the, you can just click here. You see the hand and you can move the picture where you want it. If you want to reset everything, you can just go over here and reset. You go back to zero. If you don't want it to keep the proportions, you can just open this lock and you can then select one of the sides or on top or on bottom. You want it like this, for example. <laughs> there we go. Take reset. You, there are also some uh, prefix formats, for example, one by one. It's a useful format here. Gonna keep it there, one by one. The next tool here is spot removal. If you have some dust in your image, you can remove it by clicking on this and then you get this ring. You can adjust the ring by scrolling on the mouse or using the slider. So let's say I have something uh, here. I can click here in the navigator window and zoom in. See there's something here. I can put this over and just click and Adobe Lightroom will copy an area here with the same tones and put it over the dust. So it's a very intelligent and useful tool. So if you if Adobe Lightroom does not uh, select the best area you can always take this and drag it to another area like this you can close and you see it's gone another tool is red eye removal let's say i had used the flash uh, and this person would have red eyes uh, i could just go in here and click in the red eye and remove the red eye. Click in red and it will be gone. Another thing, we have the pet eye. If you use flash on pets or birds or other animals, they don't get the red eye, but sometimes they get this um, uh, white reflections in the eye and you can easily remove them with the pet eye. You can go in and click in the reflection and it will be gone. It can be useful if you have used flash. Here we have the built-in graduated neutral density filter. I will talk more about that in the next week in the, the landscape module. But it's also a very useful tool <clears throat> where we can work 
uh, in parts of the image. For example, uh, on bottom here, I, if I want to work in the bottom, I can click, drag upwards, and I can adjust things below here. And I can adjust everything we see here from uh, color temperature, exposure, contrast, highlights, shadows, everything, sharpness. So, but now I don't want to, want to use uh, the graduated filter here, so I close it. Uh, but I will talk more about it in the next week, then we'll learn it properly for landscapes. Here we have uh, another tool where we can uh, use the radio filter and you see here I click here to get this ellipse and I can move it here drag it into the position I want what you see now I can adjust things on the outside of this form I want to darken the area around if I want to work uh, the inverse I can go here and click on the invert mask and uh, it will be adjusted on the inside go back click this back so we can close it there and we have the brush tool which is very useful so especially if you want to work on details in the image i can for example go in and adjust uh, the exposure the contrast all these settings down here but the first thing i had to do is to paint over the image and uh, I have to adjust the ring according to the job I'm going to do and uh, let's say I want to darken the area around this man it's a pa Panamanian man I want to darken the area I can set the exposure into minus 60 0 0.60 approximately and adjust the ring and I can start darken the area around here this is what we did in the dark room before it's called burning and dodging where we enhance the images in the dark room it's the same we can do here so it's a useful tool now we see his face pops out more Then I can adjust it more if I want. Darker. A bit more here. There we go. So let's keep it there. And I'll just close it when I'm done. And uh, that was these tools. Here we have the color temperature. We can adjust it warmer tones to the right or colder tones to the left and it it is important that you shoot raw files then you have more details to edit on let's say we have it here and I think I want to make a black and white picture out of this man so here I have the color here is the black and white I click on the black and white see now he's in black and white and here is the overall exposure adjustment that can go up or down if you want to go back to start let's say you are here if you want to go back to start just double click on the slider and you're back Here's the overall contrast. Here is less contrast. Here is too much. Fine. And there are no, no um, truths here. 
you have to look at the actual image because all images are different and they need different contrasts. So we can have it there so far. Uh, highlights, we can adjust the highlight tones you see here. We can have it there. Yep. Shadows, if you want to lift the shadows or darken the shadows in an image, we can do this, dragging this up or down. It can also be a useful tool. I don't want to do it here. If we have burn out areas in an image, we can adjust it with the whites. What you do is to press the Option button or Alt button at the same time and drag the slider. You see we have no burnouts here now. If we had, we would have white to see a little bit coming in on the upper left there when I move this. But the origin, original photo does not have burnouts, so I'll leave it there. Blacks is um, the tones on the left side here of the histogram, the dark tones. So if I want to darken the blacks, I can drag it to the left. Too much, of course, and too little. So blacks will also influence the contrast in the image. So drag it a little bit darker. This man deserves more contrast. There we go. Clarity is a very useful tool because you can make your images more crispy, like this, or more soft. Normally I make them a little bit more crispy because uh, clarity is sharpening the medium tones in the image. So it's a very useful tool. Here we go. Normally around 25 can be good. The vibrance and saturation tools, I'm going to talk about that in the next um, images because this is for color. If we continue down, we have the tone curve, and here we have three sliders one for highlights, one for lights, one for darks, and one for shadows. And here we can fine tune the contrast. For example, if we want uh, more highlights, you can Increase that and get a different contrast. Lift the highlights a little bit there. And we can lift the lights a little bit up. We can want, we want the darks a little bit down. And the shadows a little bit more down. Then we get another contrast. Here we also have a black and white mix, so we remember uh, this image uh, had a lot of green, it had uh, some orange. The green was in the back here, and if I want to darken the green, we still have the green canal here. So I can darken the green by dragging this, or lighten the green. I can darken it a little bit there. I don't want to do it with the orange because then his face will go dark or too bright. This is a useful tool for black and white editing and in colors we have also adjustment possibilities and we come back to that in the next images. Split toning is a very useful tool. And I want this man to be in a sepia tone, so I drag the U up to 45, both on highlights and shadows, 45. And you have to increase the saturation on both, both on shadows and highlights. Here it comes. Now we have a sepia toned black and white image and you can balance between the highlights and shadows with this slider one of the sides 
keep it there. And here we have the detail where we find the sharpening tool. So I'm going to sharpen image. I go up to 58. I can use 1.1. And I'm going to use the masking. And masking is areas where it will not be sharpened and you don't need sharpening. So I press the option button on the keyboard or alt button and drag the slider. And the dark areas are areas that will not be sharpened. So normally I end up around 40. So we can leave it there. So the dark areas are areas where the image will not be sharpened because you don't need sharpening on the blank surfaces, the sky, or the dark surfaces. So I'm going to lift it, go there. Now it's much better. And I want to lift this face a little bit up so I can go up and use the brush. I'm going to adjust the exposure slightly up. Not much. 0 0.10 and a little bit more contrast. A little bit on the highlights. And I can go here with the brush. I adjust the size of the brush by scrolling on the mouse or dragging the slider. I can use this slider. Yes, I start uh, painting with my brush. See his face is coming a little bit more up. And we have a stronger image. Keep it on this shirt here and then here. Then we can close it. And we are ready. Now we have a sepia toned black and white portrait of a Panamanian man in the Herrera province in Panama. If I want to see uh, only him, only the picture, I can click two times on the letter L on the keyboard. Then I darken the area around the picture. Then you get another and better view of your final photograph. If I press the L button one more time, I'm back in the developing module. So, this was the first image. We're going to go to the next with more, more colors. Here is a butterfly inside the rainforest of Sobrania National Park in Panama. And uh, it's taken with a macro lens and a 180 millimeter macro lens. And you can see that up here. Here is the lens, 180 millimeter. I used ISO 2000. I use aperture f8 at 1 500 second. And it is um, positioned on a hot lips or burning lips flower. A very beautiful flower in the rainforest. So, I'm going to start here on top. The first thing I'm going to do here now is to adjust the color temperature. I want a little bit warmer tone, so I want to drag the slider to the right. You see here? This is too much. This is too much on the other side. But I want... There. There's another way to adjust the color temperature and that is using the curtain here you can take a shot or you can use the auto or you can use the daylight or the cloudy depending on the color temperature personally i prefer to use the slider then i can fine tune it to where i want it to balance everything and there is another option to adjust the color temperature or the white balance. And that is to use this one. 
and it's uh, the white balance selector and I can click on it to can go out in the picture and if you look at the navigator window here you see that the white balance changed when I move this selector around in the image normally to pick uh, a neutral target you have to find a new uh, neutral gray uh, color in the frame so it's not so much of that here so I think I'm going to use the, the slider later but if I want to use it let's say here I can click there and it will select another color temperature and in this case I think it was a little bit too cold so I want to drag the slider a little bit warmer there <coughs> very good if I want to lift the exposure I can do it here or darken I'm gonna keep it as is for now uh, we can adjust the overall contrast I want to increase the contrast here is too much here is too little so you want to slide it slowly up and we can end up around here if you want to adjust the highlights we can do it with this one if you want to lift the shadows or darken the shadows we can do it here so there are no truths you have to look at uh, each image because each image images are different and you have to adjust them the sliders according to the image if I had burnout areas I can detect them with the whites if it was like this it would be burnout areas and then I could drag it back but this image doesn't have burnout areas so I can keep it here blacks is the tool where you can darken the dark black areas or light them up I'm gonna keep it there at the original place remember if you want to go back to zero all, always double click on the slider and you're back and uh, we have the clarity tool and we're gonna adjust that and the clarity will sharpen the medium tones in the image so I drag it up to 25 and now I'm going to use the vibrance which is a very intelligent tool for color saturation because it will boost up colors that are not so present in image so we get a better vibrance in the colors normally I go up to around 45 you see here and uh, I'm gonna leave the saturation for now only using vibrance I'm gonna go down further and we come down to the HSL which is a very useful tool especially when you have color adjustment to do and here we have a lot of colors we have uh, all the color spectrum here we have red orange yellow green aqua blue purple and magenta we can start here with the U each color has different uh, color tones let's look at orange if I drag the orange slider you see orange has many tones or the red you see how the flower change normally I don't use the U but if I have uh, some colors that are a little bit strange I can adjust them there and uh, we're gonna go to saturation and here I can saturate or desaturate each color let's say I want a little bit more orange and I can 
drag the slider up to the right. Here is maybe too much, and here is too little. But I want a little bit up. And maybe a little bit up on the red. And uh, it's a little bit better already. And the next tool is the luminance. And luminance is for adjusting the darkness or lightness of the of each color. So you can darken red or you can lighten red. So I'm gonna keep it there, but I want to lift the orange a little bit up to get the butterfly more to come more out. Look here now. I lift the orange. Here is too much, here is too little, and but I want a little bit up there. Not so bad. So I'm gonna leave it there. No, I want to darken green a little bit. I want it a little bit down. So it doesn't steal too much attention in the corner. There. Much better. And I will sharpen it and I can use Normally, I'm um, around 58, one by one, and I'm going to use the masking, which is the areas that will not be sharpened and not need sharpening. So I press the Option button on the keyboard and drag the slider, and the dark areas will not be sharpened, because they are blank surfaces that don't need sharpening. So I pull it up there. Now we have a better image already. I want to lift the butterfly a little bit more up. So I go to the brush, the brush tool, and uh, I adjust the exposure a little bit up, and then contrast, and not so much on the highlights. And uh, then I go out here and I can start painting. You see, it's coming more in with better light and also better contrast. Yes, and I can adjust the brush if I want to work on his head here, a little bit more up here and here, and I can adjust more if I like. Dragging the slider here. So now it comes more out. And I can just, uh, let's say I want more saturation, I can a little bit more up on the saturation. There. And I can close it. Now I see some dust here. I can click here and zoom in. I'm going to remove them with the spot removal tool. And I click there, and I have the size here. I can adjust the size by scrolling on the mouse or drag the slider. You have to adjust the size to cover the dust, and you just click over it, and Adobe Lightroom will select an area with the same tones and put it over here. Here's another. Is fit here and go back to normal and close the spot removal tool and uh, let's say I want to darken a little bit more at the edges of the frame then I can go to the brush again but now I want to darken it and I go to exposure and put it in a little bit in minus no more contrast, double click on that, adjust the ring, and I can start painting around here. And at the edges, see now the butterfly is coming more in because 
her eye is seeking the lightest points so when I darken the edges the viewer will stay at the butterfly let's see now just a little bit more down you see what happens our eye will be drawn to the butterfly more than at the edges of the frame so when I close it and I see here I used ISO 2000 so it's a little bit high in ISO but uh, with high quality modern cameras are very good but I if I want to reduce the noise you can see here that's a little bit noise it's uh, you see these grains and uh, I can use the noise reduction tool it's on the details and under sharpening I use the noise reduction I can drag this slider and you see take a look here now what happened when I drag the slider here is no reduction I drag it slowly up you see it will be a little bit better so normally I don't use more than 20 but now I'm at 13 and that's enough because if you do it too much your image will be unsharp so now we have a much better image and a final image we can use and uh, we can look at it I press the L button on the keyboard two times then I darken the area around and we can view the picture in a better way I press L one more time and I'm back. Let's jump to the next picture. Here's a autumn landscapes at Dovre in Norway. And uh, this picture has a lot of potential. <clears throat> it is taken in uh, September and uh, with beautiful fall colors on the trees. So, in this case, I'm going to start with the uh, clarity. I'm going to drag it up to 25. I'm going to increase the vibrance to 45. And lip it up on the saturation. Now it's already better. And remember, we have to develop our raw file when we get the raw file into the Adobe Lightroom it lacks color and contrast and sharpness so we need to develop it so in a raw file we have all the old film time types we could buy in the days of film black and white we have colors and we can fine-tune the image to look like all these old film types I'm gonna adjust the colors no, sorry, the contrast. See, too little, too much. But I drag the overall contrast, lift it up. Now, better. And I'm going to lift the shadows, lift it up. See here, maybe too much, but there is okay. I can continue down. I will do the sharpening now. Go up to 58. By one, I'm gonna do the masking. Press the Option button or the Alt button on com uh, Windows computers and drag it up normally up to 40, and the dark areas will not be sharpened. Yeah, there we go. So, I will also want to go down here. I want to enable profile corrections. Each lens has um, this uh, optical distortion, and this tool can adjust it back. So, I just click that button. You see what happens? A little bit optical adjustment. But it also loses uh, some of the vignetting around. The frame, I want to keep that, so I go to Profile, go back and draw 
the vignette pack so I get the, the dark area at the edges see here too little or here it is go back to basic I'm gonna go click the remove chromatic aberration tool and chromatic aberration can be color lines between for example the mountain here and the sky they can be red green blue yellow they can uh, destroy your image so this tool you can just click this and it will be gone if you have that problem now we have a lot of potential with the colors in the forest here so we're gonna fine-tune the colors so I will go up I scroll up here to the the edge cell adjustment I'm gonna start with the luminance and we have a lot of orange green and yellow in the forest here so I'm gonna lift and lighten the the orange see what happens here this is too much too little I'm gonna fine-tune it don't overdo it a little bit more on the yellow see now it's popping out more a little bit more up on the green now much better go to from luminance to saturation and I'm gonna do the same here a little bit up on the orange a little bit on yellow a little bit on green yes we have it so now I'm gonna take a look at it I press the L button two times and we have, have a finished image so this is approximately how I remember the colors out in the field so I um, like this image nice nice colors and a nice trip good memories from that trip gonna go to another image this is a white co uh, white nose coati inside the rainforest of Sobrania National Park in Panama and um, this is a typical situation how we can see wild animals we can see them in their real environment and sometimes they are hiding and uh, sometimes you just get short glimpses of them so it's a beautiful animal and we're gonna start with the warming up a little bit on the color temperature here a little bit up there there not too much here's too much here's too little a um, little bit warmer this is approximately how this animal looks like in color temperature we're gonna adjust the clarity to 25 vibrance to 45 and a little bit up on the saturation there we have it and then we go down sharpen image 58 1 masking option button or alt button and drag the slider normally up to around 40 so the dark areas will not be sharpened <clears throat> very good here you see we have a lot of green and light green color so we can go to the the HSL tool and I'm gonna darken the green a little bit so it doesn't steal too much attention from the animal I'm gonna just drag it a little bit down see here and the the animal comes more out this is the other way for dark, uh, lighten them so I'm gonna darken a little bit down so around there <clears throat> and if I want uh, more dark 
at the edges. I can, for example, go down to post crop vignetting under effects. <clears throat> I can drag this slider to the left. You see here, this is too much, this is too little, but what just to add a little bit darkness at the edges. Then I can seduce the viewer to be inside my image. Because if we have light areas at the edges, our eyes disappear out of the frame. But we want to darken it and seduce the viewers to be inside our images. So we darken a little bit around. And I can drag the midpoint. I want a little bit more in. Let's say here. Now we have a much better image. And we can press the L button twice. Then we can see it. Beautiful animal. And thank you for being with me in this uh, introduction to develop module in Adobe Lightroom. And I hope you learn a lot. And uh, we will repeat uh, developing and other functions in Adobe Lightroom throughout the next week. So we'll, you will be a master when this course is over. So thank you.